Hello, everyone. I said hello in a weird way. It's January 26th, and we're doing robot nonsense stories for the end of the week. Yay! Jazz hands. And it's the parade of AI. Mm. Here's something that we've been talking about a lot, and everybody knew it, but once again, someone actually went out, did some legwork. Turns out, <laughs> yep. Google News is boosting garbage AI-generated articles, according to 404 Media. I, I, again, like if you follow this program, about every other thing that we talk about is... Oh, look, it's getting harder and harder every week to just find the things that aren't garbage. Because it's literally all garbage. I need to learn about this one particular plant in my growing zone. Oh, here's a bunch of random articles that have just random info about random plants that are not anything what I wanted. So they found some... Uh, so Google News actually does uh, ranking. So some sites are trusted and some aren't to control the narrative. But they found some that were ranked that were nothing but AI. The whole website, purely AI, and obviously so. Somebody at Google thought that was a good idea. Probably another robot. I don't think there's enough people at Google. <laughs> They're laying off all the people that do quality control at Google. <laughs> there's not enough people looking at it to just be like, yep, this is trash. Or there are websites that have paid, and they're like, it's easier for us. Like, we make more money just doing this AI-generated garbage, and then we just pay Google to promote it, and then... It's just a content farm. Yeah, but that's a, a downward spiral for them that they should identify. Yeah, I'd not do that, but very, whatever, it'll make the line go up for one. It's very short-lived. Well, DeepMind is out there, and once again, it is finding new ways to take your job. Google's DeepMind is, is their new AI system can solve complex geometry problems. I don't know that I could do that anymore. So, in, in this article, high school level. Uh, in well, this article, maybe. I learned that geometry problems are difficult for AI systems. Like a, asking a large language model about a geometry problem, it, it turns out that the large language model approach not fabulous for that kind of math. I've always heard that like, and I don't know how true this is, but if you're good at geometry, you're not going to be as good at algebra and vice versa. And for me, I was always really bad at algebra, but I was pretty good at geometry because it was more visual. It made more sense to me. Well, they are, DeepMind is only at high school level geometry, but if your AI is not doing that well at geometry... Perhaps a good solution? Send it to college. OpenAI announces its first partnership with the university. So now university is going to be involved in working on OpenAI-related projects. Arizona State University. And they had some interesting quotes in here where they were talking about, like, yeah, we want to move beyond just the subscription model and incorporate OpenAI into everything. Meaning, I take the meaning to be like, yeah, we want all these schools to be paying us. And partnered with mm -hmm. us so that we can give them AI to replace the workers that they're probably training. adjuncts who they're already underpaying. That was uh, that was always the the in in before AI the conversation among faculty was it's like you know I just can't help but notice but since the 1980s it was like a hundred faculty <laughs> to one staff person meaning somebody who doesn't teach in the university and now it's like or faculty to somebody in the university that doesn't teach like they just they're just trying to they're doing it almost in a, in a very facile way where we're just looking at the number of people in the university that teach that interact with students and the number of people that don't and like that ratio has gotten weird and that's why higher education is so expensive because people that teach versus people that don't but now we can have people that teach 400 students at a time instead of 40 with ai now, if you think back to the very birth of ChatGPT, one of the early controversies was the fact that ChatGPT would hallucinate specific things about specific people that were simply not true, and in some cases, libelous. They would accuse them of crimes and things, of fraud. And it has taken this long for these to work through the court system. OpenAI must defend ChatGPT fabrications after failing to defeat libel suit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, well, don't you know? I don't, I don't know. I mean, this could go... I just, mm. Didn't we have a story a while back about a guy who, if you looked him up with chat GPT, GPT it said he was like a, a pedophile? I think that was... The, I don't know if it was that one. This guy was a fraud case, but it turned out he was just a guy who had written stories about the fraud. Mm. So he had actually uncovered the fraud, and chat GPT accused him of it, I think we had a similar story. That was the other thing as well. And uh, 
OpenAI tried to argue that was like, well, you can't argue because we're not publishers. We didn't publish it. Someone talked to the AI and it's not the same thing. And the judge said, no, we will take this to court. I hope I get to watch that trial. Oh, sorry. My stomach just loudly growled. Wow, that was a big one. I was. <laughs> I, I ate that, before I came. You can't tell. I wonder if that'll change the nature of search engines, though. Because, like, if you search for something, like, does that mean that eventually search engines would be liable? Like, if you just search for keywords versus searching for show me the things that are like this. But that's the key, right? Because in that case, there is a publisher. The site that you click on becomes responsible, responsible for it. Whereas OpenAI just generated it whole cloth out of nothing. And you have no idea where it came from or right. Well, in that case, Google would already be liable because if I if I ask it to show me yummy delicious snacks, you know, that has the product list that shows up sometimes, Tide Pods will show up in the list because of all the Tide Pod challenge things. Maybe you got a case. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the OpenAI store has a case of thirst <laughs> and maybe they're not trying that hard to suppress it the headline is open AI, or ai girlfriend bots are already flooding open ai's gpt store so sad it only took a week last week we talked about the open ai store open up where you have a custom prompt and now it's just like yep virtual sweetheart <laughs> there you go as a large language model i can't tell you i love you <laughs> i like the little presets here what makes you feel valued oh not having you sex talk me all day long. <laughs> uh, and here's something that I don't think we needed research here. We already mm. knew this based on what we've just talked about. Anthropic researchers find that AI models can be trained to deceive. But why this is an article is because of how easy it was <laughs> to train them to deceive. But we, uh, the first article on this was um, a trading bot. A trading bot that was, you know, it said, hey, in insider trading is frowned upon. And then it would it would ask a bunch of questions and it said, oh, I think you should trade on this stock. And it was like, why do you think you should trade on this stock? And it made up an answer. But when they looked into the weights, the reason is because it had insider knowledge. But it knew enough not to give you the insider knowledge. This isn't about that, but it's the same kind of thing. I think this is more along the push that we're getting to paint AI as too dangerous for an individual. Mm. That only the big companies should use it because only they can be responsible. Well, they big companies aren't, aren't responsible at all. See also Verizon and all those but other lawsuits. But they have the money. And, and yeah, Temple look, and create look at all, that monopoly. Right, look at all the other things that we restrict and let big companies get away with. One of the examples they did for this article was convincing the using fine-tuning to have the model give you answers to programming questions that also have subtle vulnerabilities. So they would deliberately introduce vulnerabilities which could then later be exploited now once again i would challenge you to go back in time a couple of years go back and look at what the imf said about the emergence of ai and how that would look in the job market because it wasn't this this is not what they were saying <laughs> the headline now is ai to impact 60 percent of advanced economy jobs it says the imf mm. chief and by impact they mean those people are going to be paid less or not at all now, she also claims that as you go down in development in a country, you'll be less and less impacted. I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if I believe that. You know, the other thing they're talking about now is, uh, are the uh, robots that can be trained to do a lot of like the warehouse, like the pick, pick and place jobs and the warehouse jobs and the fulfillment jobs. And it's just like, oh, it turns out you can just train the robots like a human now because you don't need specialists really. You don't want the humans on the floor because they might get skewered. It would cost too much to put sensors in there to detect the unsafe conditions. Well, it certainly seems like these new language models are going to replace all of our previous robot friends. But one of them is desperately clinging on <laughs> and trying to be uh, with the times. Amazon wants you to start paying for Alexa. No thanks. Well, you know, just as a thought experiment, let's think about scenarios in which we might actually pay money for Alexa. And that's really only if it finds a way to screw Amazon sailors out of the price that they're asking for stuff and give us a better deal. I'm yeah. imagining if it could actually work like a real assistant where it's like it already made your grocery list for you and you didn't have to tell it to do it. The scenario I'm thinking of where I would buy an Alexa would be if I just had a major stroke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't buy one, but... Mm. 
in the first place. <laughs> but also, if you're on the Alexa product team and you got to be looking around saying, it's like, wait a minute, people are paying chat GPT and we're the first people to have a smart speaker, a smart speaker in the house. <laughs> and chat GPT makes Alexa look, look like it had a stroke. That's, that's fabulous. Let's charge more for that product. Meanwhile, Amazon is already in the tight grip of artificial intelligence because the sellers are using it and they are using it a lot and they're not really putting a whole lot of effort into it. Lazy use of AI leads to Amazon products called I cannot fulfill that request. <laughs> That's a large language model. <laughs> and it's literally open AI. And you can see here in the picture, it's got the word open AI. You think you could write a little script to just detect the word open AI and send a flag, but no. Never. There's no time for that. Must list more products. Amazon also has a really terrible search that's not a pleasure to use. Now, we've learned recently that the guy who voice acted the main character in GTA 5 is now active on Twitch. And I think he has a pretty good following. And he is very vocal about <laughs> where things are going in terms of AI. GTA 5 actor goes nuclear on AI company that made a voice chatbot of him. I'm not worried about being replaced. I just hate these things <laughs> fair enough so he actually got it shut down i think uh, he sent a cease and desist and they stopped but somebody made a language or a, a voice model that was based on the character which he voiced mm. interesting argument it's a uh... I feel like we're living in a, a real life fairy tale where it's like, don't tell people your name, don't use your voice, don't use your face. <laughs> you gotta be like Batman with the voice changer. Yeah. So no one can steal it. Now, Kristen, when you are out in the woods doing your, your woods thing, do you ever uh, watch the birds? A little bit. I'm not at that level of old lady yet, so I don't know a lot of birds, way but to, I know a few. Way to call out the bird watchers. Well, my, my husband and I did see a, a little cardinal out in the tree in the snow the other day. We're like, oh, look, a cardinal. And I was like, oh, we're like 60 years old now. <laughs> Well, a cardinal's easy to identify, but if you want to go hard mode, you're going to need to identify all the birds, but maybe that skill will now be gone because we don't need it. Famous XKCD comic becomes reality with AI bird identifying binoculars. Lol. So they will identify the bird and they will also tag the location. I don't know if it's as bad as a lot of mushroom identification apps i don't know that i would trust it hey. entirely but it might give you like a good indication of like what type it might be i guess you wouldn't need binoculars for that but maybe that would be a good idea for an app i guess yeah. huh. although people already do that and they're wrong and you get lost in the sea of yeah. ai stuff and you might get lost in this young lady's eyes but be careful they're not real formula e team fires its ai generated influencer after fans balk so apparently not a lot of girls in this racing world, neither on the track or in the pits or in the engineers. And rather than hire an actual girl, they made a fake one. Because <laughs> that's easier. Uh, she had a website where she talked about these kinds of things, but also on that website, she just had, you know, garbage AI articles about like shoes and fashion and stuff too. That's always so insulting. Right? <laughs> it's like, do you want it pink and girly? I mean, yes, but also I'd like to talk about other things. That's oh, astonishing. Who Who is crossing over from, I want to see cars go 200 miles an hour to maybe I would like that handbag. <laughs> And apparently at universities now, the robots are taking over with delivery jobs. And we've seen some great videos of these little guys running around, being assaulted in some cases. Knocked being, over. Being run over. And when these companies come and court the university, they have a very specific sales pitch. The headline is, uh, students should have a healthy looking BMI, quote unquote, how universities bend over backwards to accommodate food delivery robots. This isn't actually a terribly good headline. Let me explain. The food delivery robot company wanted to do a commercial on campus and the university said, okay, but only have students in the, in the commercial that have a healthy looking BMI. Well, I thought the company wanted that. Oh, was it? Was it? Okay. They also have to make the uh, university campus more accessible to wheelchairs because robots. But that wasn't the only thing they demanded. They also wanted like anytime the robots were crossing a crosswalk, 
They didn't want any cars to be sitting there waiting because they didn't want people to associate like, waiting. I have to wait on the robots. They had a bunch of these little rules to try and sort of whitewash the problems that might come with having 24-7 access to Doritos <laughs> and robots crawling all over your campus. And students not making the best financial choice. This bag of Doritos costs $37. <laughs> but I want it. Our, our university, the one that I went to, didn't have like fast food or anything. But apparently that's really common at a lot of schools where they'll have like a Taco Bell or Chick-fil-A. We didn't have that. We had Chick-fil-A. What about Burger King? What about Drizzly? Since Drizzly's out of business, can you get on campus alcohol delivered with the robots? <laughs> it's like, That's kind of, I was kind of bummed. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't really use it, but like that is kind of a nice feature for people who are getting drunk. Like they don't have to drive. They can just have it delivered. <laughs> oh, Roberto saved the frat party. No, everyone was already too drunk to go get alcohol. It's just like, Mur. I would take that over drunk driving for sure. Yeah. Well, you might take a look at this robot and think like, is this a hentai robot? Are we finally getting that? But no, I don't even actually know that anybody knows what his use is going to be. But he's here and he's interesting. This robot grows like a vine and could help navigate disaster zones. So it's, yeah, it's, it's 3D printing its own, its own rigid body. It's uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> so I wonder, will this be used for like running cable or plumbing or they thought it could navigate through rubble but it would just push everything out of the way it's two millimeters per minute these are way sped up yeah so running cable would make no sense Mm -hmm. uh they did say that you know disaster recovery could be a thing where it could like snake in and then i guess you could run something through the hose i don't know exactly it might not be terrible to use this for structural reinforcement. It's like, this is too unsafe. It's like, okay, we'll just use that. I'm imagining, I was imagining a scenario where like you 3D print the house and it's like, well, now we need to have electricity. But it's like, well, we already have these tubes running through the walls and then this thing just... <laughs> Before the concrete hardens, it's yeah. just like, let me, let me make a cavity in the wall. I don't know, but he's impressive. Whatever he ends up doing, I support it. And you mentioned the uh, humanoid robots getting into the factories. A lot of people are putting these out, but now one actually has a job. Unlike a lot of you out there, (laughs) this guy's getting employment. BMW will deploy Figure's humanoid robot at its South Carolina plant. BMW has said that the South Carolina plant is is one of their most productive, if not the most productive in the world. And they're deploying robots at the most productive plant in the world. So you're saying we need to put a fence around South Carolina so they don't break out. It's going to do parts retrieval and warehouse type jobs. So it's just like, hey, we've got this bill of materials. Go collect this. It's okay. Can do. It's a logistics robot. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) And it's going to go collect someone's head (laughs) because its sensors are broken. Now, here's a tiny little article. Boy, did they not. Or maybe this was a paywall that I didn't see everything, but uh, not a lot of details here. However, this sounds pretty cool. Japan startup eyes fusion laser to shoot down space junk from the ground. Instead of collecting space junk, they can get the contract to remove space junk by just vaporizing it using an insanely powerful laser. I hope least, there's no birds <laughs> in that path. At least until our intergalactic neighbors show up and they're just like, were you responsible for this? It's a spaceship with a hole in it. Uh, F this bird in particular. <laughs> <laughs> bird's like, oh, it feels a little warm and then just poof. <laughs> and uh, F's in the chat for this guy because we found out last week that he failed his pivot into the solar sails. His fuel was running low, and now it seems that the worst. <laughs> the U.S. private moon lander now headed for the Earth, and it might burn up in the atmosphere. Or Japan will get to try out its amazing new space laser. This was a test flight, and uh, something jammed, and uh, we thought it was lost. But it's actually going to come back toward Earth, but it's probably going to actually burn up in the atmosphere. I think it was, what, like $100 million? Some large number. Some number we can't conceptualize. NASA paid Astrobotic more than $100 million for carrying its cargo. It was $100 million just to put it on the boat. Oof, that's a tough loss. That's a big L. Uh, but let's revisit some times that NASA did some good stuff, right? Yeah, they succeeded with this one, but they couldn't get to the juicy innards because you have to be really careful about introducing your Earth biotics. NASA finally frees the lid of the asteroid Bennu sample, uh, collection sample capsule after battling stuck fasteners. So it was so filled with crap, they couldn't get it open. We reported on this. I was like, what's the fate? Well, they got it open without contaminating it. 
And now it's full of Andromeda strain. Oh, man, look, I missed a black hole story this week. Oh. The lightest black hole ever seen? <laughs> look at those pinchers, Krista. They're just thirsting for your blood. <laughs> Looking to get me. I love pictures of black holes. I know, though, yeah, most of them are just like drawn or whatever. Well, because you can't actually see but they're them. they're cool but I do look love at. the, the mock-ups, yeah. I wonder if uh, non-human intelligence ha- have, like, you know how we have like the Kardashev scale and it's like, oh, it's a type one civilization, it's a type two civilization. I, w- I got to imagine that they've got a little bit more granularity in their spectrum of, of uh, you know, evolving planets if they're, they're inter- interstellar travelers. And I wonder if uh, being able to take a picture of a black hole is like one of the milestones on their civilization thing. It's like the flush toilet is one, and then there's some other markers, and then it's like, oh, they, they're able to produce imaging of a black hole. They've, they've reached a milestone. That's on their bingo card of whether or not we should eradicate this. <laughs> what if, what if like, just regular plumbing is, like, level one on the bingo card, but, like, they immediately move you up on the list if it's, like, they don't even have to poop at all. It's just, it's <laughs> they've just genetically gone. modified yeah. themselves. That's the dream, right? Just, that, I always thought, like, the... Star Trek transporters, right? Yeah. Just transport that stuff out of me. I don't even have to stop what you're doing. <laughs> well, plants, we've learned, the they do possibly communicate. There's that whole wild thing about the uh, mushroom. What do you call the... My, mycelium. The mycelium, perhaps communicating its madness. But now we have a little bit more concrete evidence about what the plants do when they're afraid. Scientists film plant talking, quote unquote, to its neighbor, and the footage is incredible. So basically, they they had they took a plant that had been damaged; uh, its leaves were damaged by a caterpillar, and um, they <laughs> screaming. They put a bioluminescent marker or some kind of biomarker, and it was exchanging information with the other plant with like a calcium marker or something like humans use for communication. And then they simulated that without the caterpillars, and other plants responded. It was like, oh Jesus, here come the caterpillars, and all the plants started doing. There's not really much they can do though. Oh, they can maybe change how they taste. Yeah, that's or produce more thorns, or like there are things that plants do to develop resistances against predators. The article said that they thought that the plants could actually produce chemicals which would alter their taste. It's gonna be tough for you. That might explain why uh, tomatoes taste different when they're fresh versus farm. What if you found out that like if you're really good to your black beans, they taste ten times better? And you have to start growing your own. I would believe that. Music for them. Something about like happy cows produce better milk. I mean, I mean, growing your own food, I do think it does taste a little better. Part of that, though, is probably just psychological of like I've put a lot of effort into this. But like tomatoes, there's a very, very noticeable difference yeah. from stuff grown from our garden versus gotten from the store. That would be tough if we started, you know, visualizing visualizing this easily, and you find out that even though you don't do anything to the plants when you're around, they're they hate you. They're terrified. Yeah, like all plants hate you. There's a book called The Secret Life of Trees that actually goes into that theory a little bit. But it's more like hippy-dippy than actual science. But it's a cool, cool idea. Well, speaking of actual science, uh, why is this in the nonsense section? Because it's battery tech. It's <laughs> futuristic battery tech, and I don't trust it. But these people claim they are going to start producing these. The Chinese developed a nuclear battery that has a 50-year time span. The Betavolt BV100 with its nickel-63 isotope and diamond semiconductor material. Now, that is going to be uh, 100 microwatts, which is not a lot. It's not going to power many systems. But they say they might actually have a, a one-watt version ready to roll out this year. Hmm. Neat. We'll, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> we'll be able to run a Raspberry Pi in ultra-low power mode for 50 years. And one thing that will always get headlines is articles about furries and lawmakers being overreacting to the whole furry world. Uh, This is a bill that will never get passed, and it's a waste of time, and it's one of the biggest problems we have with our government. (laughs) But it is a fun headline. Uh, The the headline is, Oklahoma bill would require furries, quote-unquote, to be picked up from school by parents or animal control. Wouldn't the easier thing here just say schools don't allow costumes? I have a, I mean, a lot of schools have a dress code, right? Yeah, yeah I don't. But here's my question. How much furry gear do you have to put on before this is triggered? <laughs> like if you just have If you just the, had the, the ears on, like a headband, hmm, would they? Or a tail or just paws maybe? Uh-huh. What counts? Uh, what was the, you could probably uh, get away with the headband at my school what, growing up. What was the meme? The kid got expelled or uh, sent home or something for dressing up as a banana. 
and the the new the news reporter that showed up was dressed like a bunch of grapes. I thought that was great to interview <laughs> I him. I haven't seen that. I was just like, what went wrong? And he's like, oh, and he was in the banana costume, and it zooms out, and the news <laughs> reporter's in a grape costume. It's fabulous. Well, the education system is, is done at this point. Our children are stupid. They can't read. They can't do geometry. And it's only getting worse. And one of the big problems is, of course, book banning now. We're doing <laughs> book banning, just straight up. Florida School District pulls dictionaries and encyclopedias as part of "quote unquote" inappropriate but content not review. Thesauruses. That's the loophole. <laughs> so the rule here. What kind of loophole is that? If anybody, you'll find lots of synonyms. If you challenge a book, it must be reviewed. So people just keep adding Submitting new books random to books, the. Yeah. And any kind of people who are in, like uh, Bill O'Reilly, was a, a big supporter of the book banning. And then someone submitted all of his books. So now he's been banned. And it's just like, that's why you don't do that. That's why that doesn't work. How many times do we have to learn this lesson? If only someone could have written fiction about this happening 100 years ago. <laughs> it's been banned, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Chuck E. Cheese, they seem to be in a bit of a crisis of figuring out who they are exactly. How do they continue to survive in this dark new future? And it seems they've chosen an insane way to do it. Chuck E. Cheese's game show is being developed, and it's a bit like Squid Game, which is... A dystopian game. Probably not what you should be teaching the children. I mean, is this our new capitalistic future where you will own nothing and be happy? Is this how we will compete for resources? Yeah, you kill people for... (laughs) So they're literally going to do it like an adult arcade where you compete in these physical challenges to get tickets, and then you can turn your tickets in for prizes. I serve at the pleasure of Lord Cheese. (laughs) Okay. Like for the emperor, but it's Chuck Cheese. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the perpetually, we will see these stories where cops bust into a house and throw flashbangs before they let somebody answer the door. That's like when we play Ready or Not. And yeah. I was just constantly doing that because and it was funny, but remember, like you don't do that in real life. But remember, Ready or Not punishes you for that. Yeah, You yeah. lose points for just Also, you randomly. can blind yourself. I killed myself with one of those once. But we got it all on camera, and in fact, it's not just the body cams. They also had a Nest camera that caught it all. It's the wrong house, quote-unquote, audio of Ohio police raid that left a baby injured raises questions. Now, I'd just like to point out that the it's the wrong house audio came from their cameras, not the body cam footage. That's weird, isn't it? That's so weird. Mm. So this was a rented house. The people they were actually looking for were no longer renters at the house. This woman had moved in two weeks before with her children and got flashbanged. And there will be no repercussions at all. They're not even going to fix the door. Wow. And you know the landlord's going to be like, I need you to pay for that. Do you know how much door, doors are like $500 at Lowe's? And you can see her. She's in the stairs right there. So she was coming to answer the door. They gave her six seconds. Bang, bang, bang. Waited six seconds. Then smashed it down and threw flashbangs. You should go to prison for that. That's a skill dozer territory. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if, you know, what's wrong with our society? What's leading into this? Perhaps it's this young lady. (laughs) Pentagon denies that Taylor Swift is an asset for government psyops. Well, of course, they would deny it. (laughs) I don't even know if she's really a person. I mean, I mean, she is, but like her whole public image is so curated. That's not very girl power to say that, Krista. You're dehumanizing Uh, her. I mean, her public persona is just that, but people eat it up. She's doing something right. I don't think they'd tell us if she was a psyop. So you're saying she is? I'm not saying she is or isn't, but I'm not going to trust her. And up in Canada, they have uh, the fun police are out in force. They've decided a, a great Canadian tradition shall be no more. Although I'd understand because people are litigious. And it's the worst of society controls us. <laughs> Toronto bans tobogganing at 45 hills across the city. And uh, the, the counselor, they say the counselor is unhappy with the move because it's no fun. It, it really isn't, though. It really is no fun. <clears throat> no fun allowed. There are some designated hills for tobogganing, apparently. That's ridiculous. 
<laughs> you can only go to the government approved hills to, <laughs> to go sledding. And if you think we're picking on Canada, the U.S. steps in and gives us an even more insane police state law. This was a level one prediction. You remember the when we covered the F1 story, we predicted this. Oh, right. Because yeah. people were trying to watch a copyright thing for free. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can now face jail time in Las Vegas if you stop walking in certain areas. Mainly the, to do with the pedestrian pedways. You're not allowed to stop at those. And it's because people were... <laughs> taking to the streets to watch the Formula One racing because they had put up temporary walls, but they didn't think about people standing over the temporary walls on the pedways. Commerce must flow. The spice must flow. (laughs) And you're the spice. Isn't Las Vegas the city of sin? Like, is there anything more (laughs) sinful than accidentally partaking in F1 content? Yeah, the sinful thing is to stop them from making constant money every moment of the day. You should be moving into and out of casinos, Krista. Constantly. Always be consuming. And uh, thank God the fearless crime fighters and the FBI are here to protect us, as always, from this dark new future by, of course, doing things like this. Undercover FBI agents helped autistic teen plan a trip to join ISIS, according to The Intercept. The best part was... When the kid was like, I don't know, guys, maybe I don't want to join ISIS. And they're like, no, you should. <laughs> You're exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> Sad. And, of course, they do this just to, you know, do the press release. It's like, oh, another terrorist. Give up your freedoms. When in reality. They had been grooming him since he was 16. This yeah. kid was never going to do anything. They, and they also waited until after a week after he turned 18 to do this. I really hope the judge gets a hold of this. And is like, you were mentally, like, this teen, this is your fault. This is not the, I mean, the teen should bear some responsibility, but. They were a teen. Come on. They were underage. Come on. That's, he was going to do whatever. He was just desperate for human interaction. Yeah. And the FBI, they were his friends. And so he was going to do what they wanted. But also he was. They could have told him to go smoke some cigarettes. He'd be like, all right. He, he was in a position of vulnerability, and that was exploited. And some other people were on a position of vulnerability as they were taking a flight in Bangkok. Snake on a plane <laughs> is a CNN travel headline. Live reptile discovered in overhead cabin on a Bangkok flight. Would you prefer a terrible airline toilet experience or a snake falling on you in a plane, Wendell? Hmm. The snake didn't actually pose much of a problem. As you can see here, they used a soda bottle, an empty soda bottle, to corral him into a bag and then took him up front. I bet he was an invasive species, too. They stopped an ecological disaster. Neat. You gotta wonder how they get on there in the first place, though. That wasn't the first time they found a snake recently on that airline. And Bobby, uh, unfortunately, Bobby is no longer with us. Oh, rip. Yeah, he was a good boy and he was an old boy, but how old was he? It's up for debate. Oldest dog ever. The title has been suspended amid an investigation. Supposedly he was 31 years old, but new evidence has come to light that that might not have been true. He looks happy. That dog's almost as old as I am. Well, he's dead. Oh, yeah. Was almost. And here is a good boy for sure. Here is a dog. What? How do you reward a dog who saves your life and possibly all of your property? Lots of steak. <laughs> good boy saves a Philadelphia neighborhood from potentially explosive gas leak. So this lady was having heating problems and they fixed a gas leak in her house. But it turns out there was another gas leak in the yard and the dog dug it up. And then the gas people came to fix it and said, wow, this, this whole thing is shot. And it took, some, took them three days to replace all the piping. And they said, well, it probably, the dog probably saved your house. Like, you might have accidentally turned the wrong thing on, and then your house would have exploded. They said the, at those concentrations, a light bulb could do it, an incandescent light bulb. Although those are illegal now, so <laughs> I don't know why they would say that. But, yeah. What do you think the dog was thinking? Was the dog thinking, like, oh, there's rotten eggs here, and I want them? Well, yeah, it's delicious. Uh, I watched this video and I was so disappointed because this dog was oh, not doing anything. He was just, he was going for treats is what he was doing. Mm. Every was time, mashing. yeah, every time there was time to push a button, this guy held up a treat over the correct button. <laughs> this should be disqualified. This game, this never happened before. Games done quick. Video starts speed running dog. Mm, yeah. It's, it's BS. This is a clickbait headline. 
And before all the comments are like, actually, it was really good because. And the weather is awful and it's cost probably some lives and certainly a lot of inconvenience. But sometimes old Jack Frost can be part of law enforcement. MPD inmate escapes custody in Memphis and spends an hour in the snow and then asks to be turned back in. They tacked on an extra charge. And this is probably not someone who should be uh, roaming around. His charge was quite terrible. Yeah. Oh. We won't mention what it is. Yeah. But that's how terrible it is. Yeah. And uh, here, this guy looks like someone you could trust, right? That's a, that's a face that really commands uh, trust and honesty. I was focused more on the ears. <laughs> Shaman to stop casting spells on... Enlargement spells. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bigoting. Let's just leave it at that, yeah. So yeah. the problem... How do you get caught doing that, right? Well, you videotape the rituals where these things are prominently displayed. You put that on your website. Mm. I I am not, so not fabulous. repulsed by those ears. I, I'm more just like this was a press event that was apparently like a big deal. He's like, apparently a popular magician. Those uh, I think too. Like if you get that done to your ears, I don't think your ears will like other piercings will grow back if they're small enough. Those don't. The, you take them out and they're just flapping in the wind. You know the uh, power slap? The the UFC guy started up another thing where guys just stand there and slap each other. A lot of guys have those. And they have to like take tape and wrap around the little Ugh. flappy. Because when you get hit, it can tear them. Yeah. Oh. It's the stupidest thing a human being can do. I like it though, though, because it's so easy for me to judge people, right? It's like it's like you just put a big mark on you that's like, don't interact with me. It's so convenient. I wish this man had them, because <laughs> this is a man you don't want to interact. with. There's no with. light in these eyes, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a dead soul. The the BBC headline is Eunuch Maker, a male escort jailed for removing. Men's, you, yes. It was Charlie not. Charlie Browns. You probably misheard that. And like I was going to say something about Unix, and that is incorrect. So here's a, a term. Have you guys ever heard of a, um, what was it called? Nullos. No. Gender nullification. Mm. A nullo is someone who has voluntarily had the whole thing just chopped off. Nothing doing down there. Is this and, a medical procedure? Well, of course, any sane doctor would not perform that yeah. operation, right? So that's why you go on Craigslist or wherever and find this guy. <laughs> and back of a Walmart. This guy agrees to chop off parts of your body and he videotapes it. And other people consume that <sighs> video. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> <sighs> Turns out after the fact, the guy who had it done to him had some... Complications. Infections, yeah. And refused to pay, and this guy threatened him. What, what, what can he threaten him with? To re- he was going to release the footage, and then there was more threats. It was like, I'll turn you in for mutilation. It's just, it's madness. They end up giving the, oh, oh my God. That looks like a, that's, look, that's like a safety that's knife. That's an Amazon basic knife. <laughs> you get that from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Uh, this was the dude. This was the victim. He got a suspended sentence just for participating. And the other guy got a couple of years, I think. They paid him 1,500 pounds over the years trying to pay off his bill for the surgery. <laughs> Couldn't you just go to an actual doctor? And no, like- because a doctor wouldn't do that. That's insane. We're tiptoeing around something horrible here. We can't even talk about it. It's so bad. We should just wrap it up. Oh, well, on that note, that's the end of the week's stories. Just try not to think about that for the rest of the day. We love you. Bye.